When fitting the wheels to the axles, the crank pins need to be spaced 90 degrees apart. Actually, there can be a little bit of give and take there. They don't have to be precisely 90 degrees, but it is essential that all three sets of wheels have the same spacing between the crank pins. First, I need to fix one wheel on each of the three axles. When I turn the axle bores in the wheels, some are a closer fit than others, and I match the wheels so that for each pair, I had one nice snug fit and one slightly looser fit. So for each axle, the first wheel I'm fitting will be the looser of the pair. And when I say loose, I mean loose enough that a wobble may be visible if I don't take the effort to set the wheel square. Here I've got one of the axles held in my collet chuck and I give the end of it a really good clean with acetone and I've already done likewise with the whole board in the wheel. With everything cleaned, I now apply the Loctite, ensuring there's plenty of compound to fill the recess I've cut in the shoulder. And then I fit the wheel again, adding a little bit more compound just to make sure that recess is full. As I push the wheel home, I rotate it just to ensure again the compound is filling that gap. And then when I'm ready, I use a tailstock to push the wheel hard up against the back of that shoulder I turned in the axle. And this is the index I'm using to ensure that the wheel runs true. I leave this overnight for the compound to go off and repeat the same for the other two axles. With one wheel already fixed on the axle, I've now got the axle held in a V-block which itself is sitting on top of another V-block. And all of this is on my surface table, so I've got a good flat surface from which to work off of. So the wheel that's fixed to the axle, the axle box in place, and the axle clamped into the V-block. To determine the height of the axle from the table, I've actually approached it two ways. One using the vernier gauge, which has been zeroed. And here I just touch it off against the top of the axle and read off the scale, which is coming out at 94.2224. The other way I've measured it is I've measured both the blocks. These both come in at 49.55 mil, and I've measured the offset from the top of the block down to the top of the axle, which is 4.87 mil. A little bit of subtraction comes out at 94.23 mil which is bang on with my reading here, which was between 94.2 and 94.4. Now that I know the position of the axle from the top of the surface table, I can move around the other way and start positioning the crank pin. This is the front right wheel. What I now need to do is position the wheel such that the crank pin is in a fixed position. And to do that, I'm using one of my parallels which I've already measured at 95mm, not sure if that number is visible, but 95mm. So by positioning the parallel directly underneath the crank pin and pushing the crank pin against it, I now know that the bottom of that crank pin is 95mm off the surface table. With all that data, I can now go and plug the numbers into my CAD package and determine the position for the crank pin on the other side how high that needs to be off the table. And from that dimension, I'm gonna go and machine a block, which will be the equivalent of the parallel. And then I can use that to locate the crank pin on the other side. What I'm sharing on the screen here is the outcome of my work using the CAD package. Now a word of warning, I am no expert here. I've not actually done this before, so this is a first for me. I have quartered wheels previously, but I haven't used this method. So it may not work, but I'm pretty sure it will. The ultimate test will be once I've completed the quartering of all three sets of wheels, fitted them back in the frames, along with the coupling rods. If all is good, it won't bind. If I've got it wrong, it will bind. Time will tell. And unfortunately, we won't get into that this video. That will come later. But let me explain what I've done. This line here is the top of the surface table. And here we have the axle. And as we can see, I've got it positioned such that the axle is 94.23 millimeters off the top of the surface table. This is the crank pin on wheel number two, the wheel that is currently fixed to the axle. And as we can see, this is positioned such that the bottom of it is 95 millimeters off the top of the surface table. And this here is the pitch circle diameter for the crank pins. With all of that plugged into the CAD, 
I'm able to determine the radial center line for the crank pin. Knowing that, I can add another center line through the center of the wheel at 90 degrees. And where this intersects the PCD center line will be the center position for the crank pin on wheel number one. And to finish off this little exercise with the CAD, I can determine the distance from the bottom of the crank pin on wheel number one to the top of the surface table here at 58.11 millimeters. All right, according to my calculations, I'm looking for an offset of 58.11 millimeters from the surface of the table to the underside of the crank pin. I've turned this bit of bar. This is 58.13 millimeters long, so 0 0.02 mil too long. That's good enough. In fact, what is more important is that all three wheels are done exactly the same. So on the rear side from the camera, the crank pin is snug against the parallel, which is my 95mm offset. And on this side, after I've applied the Loctite, I just need to ensure that this wheel is positioned with that crank pin against the bar. Just using some acetone to make sure there's no grease or oil on the axle and likewise on the wheel. A quick check, both the axle boxes are in position. It does take quite a while to go off, particularly as it's quite cold in here tonight. And the gap is not big, but at the same time of course it's not particularly small. Okay, the crank pin on the back, on the left side here, is firmly against the parallel. For some reason on this first set of wheels, I made a bit of a meal of getting the wheel into position. For the subsequent wheel sets, I did this in a matter of seconds. I took so long here, I ended up fighting the compound as it was starting to go off. But I got there in the end with the crank pin on this side, snugly against the bar. From here onwards it's just a case of leaving this overnight for the Loctite to go off and then repeating the same for the other two axles. As always, thanks for watching.